So first of all, I'd like to thank Kavita Ma'am for giving me this opportunity and take the session at the MBB. I really appreciate this opportunity that is given by Ma'am. And obviously, uh, I'll, I'll try to give you best uh, in hands-on. Now my topic that is given to me is validity, validity assessment and pen testing. Okay, so basically I came to that here from this audience is here. So I'm already aware about the security, crypto and all these basic stuff. And so for some parts it's totally new. So I try to start from the basic. And obviously like uh, as here we just cover the basics of theory and the most part of my session will be hard so that we'll be having it on four floor in the lab. Alright? So these are the content that I am going to cover in today's session. I start with basics, what is the security audit? And what are the different security tests that we need to perform? Polarity assessment, the basics of polarity assessment. Penetration testing, different approaches to do this pen test. How to plan a pen test. Then we have a hands-on and basis tool, which is one of the best tool of the pen test approach. Then we have, uh, now this is one thing, like I would like to show you practically that how to create the virtual environment, how to create a NAT network, okay, how to use a different virtual images in a particular NAT network, okay, so we we'll just do some hands on on that. Uh, then we we'll have, now actually vulnerability assessment, there are two types of scanning we have to do. The first one is passive and then active. So, in the passive scan, I will be covering about Vaisha. Just, just a five minutes introduction, I think that many people are already aware about the Vaisha. So, we will not waste time with that. Then, ARP tables. This is one of the method of passive scan. If I come to the active scanning, then we have NMAP. Again, I think most of the people already know the basics of NMAP, but we try to go in detail. And in case of web application interest, we explore two tools, Dotsuit and OAPSDA. Now I would like to start with the code. Cyber security is a cat and mouse game. And the mouse always has a sharper key. As defenders, we must innovate faster than the attackers, constantly adapting our strategies, to stay one step ahead in the ever-evolving landscape of digital threats. Now this quote is written by Jonathan Anderson, who is one of the Chief Security Officer in USA. Okay, now from this quote, what this quote conveys is that in, in today's digital era, okay, there is a need of constant change, okay, every, 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 every uh, and as is constantly changing every day, so we need to have some proactive measures, right? And that should be updated almost every month to save the whole digital world, right? So we have to be always a, we have to counter in terms of mouse, not the cat, right? So we always have to think in terms of attacker, how attackers we think in the next 10 days and that using that we need to change our approach, right? So, as for the last year's study, in 2002, there were over 30, 300 million cyber attacks that was happened worldwide, okay, which meant basically 67 increase from the previous year. Now this data I got from Cyber Security Venture, this is one of the best sites to check what's happening in currently the whole world in terms of cyber security, in terms of attacks, okay. So you can just imagine in one year, 60% Cyber security attacks has been happened all over the world, right? And based on this data, I would like to start with my topic, that is vulnerability assessment and pain pressure testing. So first of all, uh, if I'm talking about this vulnerability assessment or pain test and all these things, I need to understand about the security audit and different security tests. I think you must have heard about this word security audits. Right? At the end of the end financial year, we have the CA audit. Right? Same thing here. This is a security audit. Now, uh, basically what is a security audit? So, this is like basically, uh, uh, we can say, some best practices that we need to follow throughout the year. 
to perform this audit. A little bit again, what is the security audit? Now, these are some best practices we have to follow in a particular digital environment, right? To make us updated in terms of security. Now, this cyber security test on audit is basically the second part of this test is vulnerability assessment. I'll, I'll touch on this particular topic later in detail. Right now, I just want to tell you about the assessment is that it is basically to identify the hole in the security. Or you can say this it is basically used to identify the security hole in the whole IT world system. Right? The last one is penetration testing. That is the main topic of our today's session. I'll again talk about the penetration testing in detail. Now, in terms of security audit, right? The actual definition of audit is that it is a manual or a systematic measurable technical assessment of any system or any application. So it can be a manual, right? It can be an automatic measurable assessment of any system, any network or any application. Now, this assessment includes some steps. These are very basic steps that is given by the security people or the cyber people. The first one is checking that whenever I want to do the audit, security audit, for example, I want to perform the audit for this lab in the system admin. So in that case, when you first see this lab, this particular audit will include, I need to check the system configuration, okay, for the best practices. Now what is the meaning of this thing? That I want to check all the system configuration that follows the best practices of the particular audit. Then we have interviewing staff. Now, basically here, if I want to perform the audit in the lab, I need to interview all the staff, lab assistants, everyone, and I need to check that how, what extent they are aware about the information security measures, the information security technique techniques. Right? So in that case, this is one of the step of the assessment. The next step will be reviewing application and operating system access control. Now this we all know, right? So basically I need to review, review that what are the different access controls are given in your particular lab. Like how many machines will be accessible by students, how many machines will be accessible by staff and all these things. So this needs to be reviewed in this particular assessment. The next one is analyzing physical access to the system. Okay, I have done with the system configuration, I have done with the staff, everything is done. Now the last part is that I need to analyze the actual physical access to the system. Now in this particular example, what is the physical access? Maybe I will have a, a, some security mechanism at the end of the, or maybe at the door, right? We can have a maybe thumbprint to enter in the lab, whatever. Right? So this, using this physical access, we can also do the protection of the system. That is one of the steps that we need to analyze in the assessment process, right? Okay. And the last one is that, now this, all these uh, assessments are for the staff, for the students, right? But we have the admin also, right? So whenever I am doing any security audit, always admin plays a very important role, okay? So even we need to analyze that what type of system configuration and access privilege should be given to IT? Right? Okay, fine. So I just spoke about the best practices that is forward in the security audit. I hope everybody understood this part. Okay? Now, my major question is that how do you perform the security audits? Or who will help you to perform the security audits? How do you to know that which are the best practices that I need to follow while doing this particular security audit? Yes or no? A little bit of question. Everybody in this generation, those who are using laptop, just for a second, because we have to work on the hands on later. So basically here, my question to all of you is that. I just spoke about the best practices. If I want to perform the security audit for my whole college, right, what type of techniques I need to follow? That's the first question. Second question is that, who will tell me that these are the best practices? Yes or no? Now to answer this question, okay, thankfully, we have lots of organization and the constitutions available in the, in the world who will help me to answer these particular questions. So for example, the first one is CRS. I think you must have heard the people from the security. 
security, CRC Center of Internet Security. Okay? Now this is the organization who will help me to decide which are the best practices I need to follow to perform the security audit. The next organization is US National Institute of Standards and Technology. That is, even this is very well known name in the security is right? Even this means they have a particular guidelines that I need to follow whenever I'm doing any audit in my particular location. Right? Now, okay, fine. So I, I know that only these people have decided the particular prices or some rules that I need to follow. Now, the next thing is that who has given guides to this NIST and CIS to decide this particular practices? Yes? So, we should, or these people should follow some benchmark to decide these best practices? Yes or no? Suppose there are 10 practices are here. Who will decide that these are the 10 best practices? Or maybe out of 10, these only 2 are the best practices. So, we should have some benchmark for that. Right? So, again, there are 2 particular benchmarks that will help to decide the best practices. The first one is XCCDF, that is Extensible Configuration Checklist Description Format. Okay, now this is one of the benchmark that is used to decide that among 10, 5 are the best practices that this list people should publish to the whole world or the next values are not the best track price, we should not follow that. Right? You understand what is the benchmark in this case? My first benchmark is there that we need to follow is open vulnerability and assessment language, that is OVN. Okay? So using these two benchmarks, these people, these people, okay, they will decide about the best track prices that we need to follow in the security audit. Right? Alright. Fine. Now, I understood that, okay, I need to follow these particular practices, I have, I know about the benchmark, but now how do we implement that? How do we perform the audit for my lab? So, we need some tool for that, and the very best automatic tool is CISCAP. Anybody? Who about this tool? It is CIS Computation Assessment Tool. Okay, so this is one of the best, again, automated tool that is used basically not in India but in other countries they are using this tool okay, to perform the security audit. Even this is used by some organizations also. Now, very basic terms. Uh, before going to start, what is a vulnerability, what is a pain test, how to do that, all these things. So, I, I need to discuss these terms. Those are very good for security. The first term is asset, threat, vulnerability and risk. So, what is my asset? So asset, basically, what we are trying to protect, right? So it can be information, it can be people, it can be lab, it can be machine, it can be server. That you want to protect can be called as asset in terms of security. Yes? Okay. The next one is threat. So anything that exploit is a threat. Anything that can be exploit using vulnerability can be a threat. So for example, what we are trying to protect against what is a threat? I'll give an example to understand this terms. Next we have vulnerability. Vulnerability is what? It is a weakness of the system or it is a gap in the system. Using that particular gap and that they may try to enter and they may try to harm the system. Right? Next we have this. So what is the risk? This is the potential for loss or damage as a result of threat brought in the vulnerability. So whenever the threat is exploited, that will be one of the risks to the asset. Yes? Okay. So, if I just combine asset plus threat plus vulnerability, it will basically will come up as a risk to the whole system, to the whole server or whatever. Right? Okay. Now there is one more important term exploit. We already know, I'll just give the proper definition of exploit. So if I uh, think this particular word in terms of work, exploit is the act of successful attack on an asset. What is exploit? It is the act of successful attack on an asset. But if I consider this as a noun, just, just see, okay? So each 
change. Verb and noun about exploit. We can consider this as a noun. It is a piece of software that is advantage of vulnerability. So anybody can tell the difference between verb and noun in terms of exploit. What do you understand? If an incident has a verb, it's already happening. It's a damage, and that way is may, may or may not be happening, right? So that is a big thing uh, or big difference we can say when we consider exploit as a verb or as a noun, correct? So generally, when we ask students what is exploitation, they will always say, "Oh, it is that bad." No, there is a difference, right? Now, I would like to give the best example, and uh, this is example is given to many standard groups. I think those who have already taken security survey, they already know this particular example. There is a scenario, very popular example. There is a scenario, in this particular scenario, there is a wall, and behind this wall, there is a person who is standing. Right? On the left side or side of the wall, there is a rising water. And on the right side of the wall, one person is standing. And there is a small crack in the wall. Now, we we'll just see this definition particularly in this particular scenario. So, in particular scenario, I hope you understood the scenario. There is a wall, wall with a small crack. Left side we have rising water, and right side we have a person who is standing on the right hand side. Right? Now, what is the asset? Person. Person. Because something is going to happen with the person. What do you mean by threat? Rising water. Right now water is below that crack. So if the water rises, that can be threat to a particular person. What do you mean by vulnerability? Crack in the water is a vulnerability. If that vulnerability explodes, then it can become a threat and the threat can damage the asset. Correct? Okay. Now what is this? Right, the water rises then? Loss of life. Yes, loss of life, okay? So, fine. But also, I think you understood this term properly now. Right? Okay, now I have a question for all of you. How will you protect this person? What is the immediate solution that you can perform to avoid threat, to avoid vulnerability in this scenario? Okay, Mark is saying we can keep the cap, patch on the wall, but that person is somewhere in maybe you know, uh, isolated location because rising water area has exploded. We will not have that patch and what is the material required for patch that crack. So what do we do? Sorry? Who will define, who will identify, will classify, will 
paralyze the weakness of the system, right? To protect that system from the attack. Everybody? One more definition. It evaluates the exposure of the system to known vulnerabilities and assigns severity levels to those vulnerabilities and recommends remediation or mitigation if and whenever needed. For a difficult level, definition is okay. Okay. So, what is a vulnerability assessment? Basically, it evaluates the exposure of the system. That can be vulnerability assessment, right? Nowadays, for our kids, right, they always take care, like they, they should always be in a good company. The friend should be always good, like they should be studious, they should be teaching, right? So we don't want to expose our, expose our students to this particular world, right? The same thing over here, if I am talking about vulnerability assessment, I need to check that the particular system is, how much is exposure to this big attacks at all, right? I need to evaluate that particular part in this assessment process. And the last definition is, the main goal of this process is to provide the necessary knowledge, awareness, and risk backgrounds to our organizations to take appropriate actions against the threats to the environment. So the last definition, we are talking about the goal of this vulnerability assessment. What is the goal? In the first one, we understood what is our vulnerability assessment. In the second thing, we understood that how to or what how to check the level of the assessment. In the, in the last definition, we are understood the goal of this assessment process, vulnerability assessment, right? The goal is to provide the necessary knowledge, right, awareness and this to the organization to handle this particular malware or whatever the threats in the system. Mm -hmm. Right? Alright. So we understood the vulnerability assessment in, in, in the short language, in the short word, simple words. A vulnerability assessment is a process of defining, identifying and classifying the security holes in IT systems. So you just remember one thing. Vulnerability assessment is a security holes in the IT system. That's it. Okay? This is a crack hole, wall tech hole. That is a vulnerability. Okay? So it is a security hole in the IT system. 